Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a tutorial on how I process my images in Capture One. This is not going to be a start to finish image tutorial. So for most of you, you may know by now that I do use Capture One for my raw processing. I use it mainly for my color grading these days and my general adjustments in terms of exposure and clarity, sharpness, etc. So I do use the program for those particular reasons, but I also still use Photoshop for most of the skin retouching elements that I do and most of the healing dodge and burn all of those kinds of things that come into skin retouching I will do in Photoshop so there is kind of two parts to me processing my images but I want to show you guys today how I process from start to finish in Capture One, that first half of processing my images, essentially. So I really like to work with color in Capture One especially, and that's why I like to do my color grading. That's why I like to do a skin color correction. And this is where I mainly do those things now. So first off though, we are going to start with actually something as basic as cropping an image. Now this is just usually how I like to start with my images. I like to get a better feel for if I need to crop and what the composition is actually going to look like. So for me, I tend to look at my beauty images in Capture One. I'll upload them to Capture One and they'll be straight here over on the images tab. Now, one thing that I will say is I'm going to look at doing a video on workflow and I'm going to look at doing a video on how I kind of look through my process of elimination as well and actually looking at how I choose my images that I want to edit. But that will be definitely for another video. So I've got my image here that I want to work on, but I definitely feel that the composition is not quite right here. I do feel like there is distracting elements in this image and it's something that can be very apparent in a beauty image, especially when you're so close up, there can be very distracting elements. And sometimes the best way to get rid of those distracting elements is to crop them out. So I'm going to get the crop tool up here and we're going to start off this process by just cropping in a little bit. So I'm going to kind of get rid of this finger down here. It's just bothering me. I don't particularly want it in the image, but I am very conscious of cutting off the nose too much. I'm conscious of cutting off the eye makeup too much. I don't want to do either of those things here. Like I said, I don't want to get rid of too much of the nose here, but... It is a tight beauty crop, so we need to keep that in mind as well. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of kind of these elements around here. A lot of people would not like to crop that part of the nose out, but for me, as I said, I'm a beauty photographer. A lot of the time, it's very close crops on the face, and you do have to kind of take those risks with cropping that you usually wouldn't otherwise do. But the focus of this shot is going to be this eye. So we need to make sure that no matter what, everything is focusing around this eye makeup and the eye in the image. So we may even go a little bit further in just because I'm a little bit worried about this eye becoming a really distracting detail as well. I don't want that to be too distracting. As I said, this is the hero of the shot, this area here. So we'll kind of just do it to about there. And that way I don't have to retouch out the finger here. So I'm going to click just on one of the other tools up here and that is going to automatically make that adjustment. So you can see here now we are really looking closely at the eye. It is the focus of our attention as opposed to before when you've got a lot of other distracting elements here that you are looking at. So like I said, not everyone would be okay with this kind of crop, but for me, this is just my style. This is how I like to focus in on certain elements of the face. So now that we've got our crop, I would then move on to the exposure tab just up the top here and making sure we are in the exposure tab, I would then start to alter some of these sliders here. Now, I feel like there could be a little bit more light in this image. So just a little bit more brightening just here, just to kind of like lift the image a little bit. Uh, I don't feel like I'm going to be altering the contrast too much. Just a little bit. And then brightness, I don't really feel like we need any more brightness in the image or saturation for that matter. I am going to work on color in a second. That would be our skin color correction and also our color grading. So I will then go down to highlights here. I'll just pump this up a little bit, see if we can get a little bit more highlight there just for contrast. Shadow I'm not really going to alter and white and black I'm not going to alter either in this instance. And for clarity, I am going to move that up a little bit. I like to do this with a lot of my beauty portraits because I find that clarity really helps the texture be brought out in an image. You can see here when I move this slider across how much the texture is really being emphasized. We're not going to go too far with it because I am going to move the structure up here as well. And you can see that it really helps to kind of 
I guess sharpen those little details with the clarity. So then I would go into my skin color correction. So just up here under the color tab, I'm just going to do some basic skin color correction at the moment because I am going to go on to color grading. I don't want to alter the skin tone too much because when I'm color grading, I do tend to find that the skin tone, especially in beauty images, because it takes up a lot of the shot, uh, it will get altered again. So we're just going to get kind of a base going here for the skin tone and then come back to it. I'm going to select my little eyedropper tool here and just kind of select a mid-tone from the skin tone. So this particular color is kind of working as the base for our alteration here. So I'm gonna move the hue tab just a little bit more towards the pinkier side because I do find that there is a bit of yellow in the skin tone. And I'm gonna move the saturation down just a little bit just to kind of bring that down overall. I'm also gonna bring down the lightness a little bit. This kind of, I find, really details the skin a little bit more. It gives it a little bit more contrast overall and also kind of makes things like freckles stand out a little bit better as well. So I do tend to move that down if I'm altering skin tone at any point. And then down here under uniformity, you can alter this. Um, I am going to move up the hue just a little bit. This kind of helps the colors that you're working with and altering mesh a little bit more across the image and across the whole skin tone. So you can see the more I push this up, the more kind of monotone the skin tone's becoming, but I don't want it to be too monotone. So we're going to kind of leave it around here. And same thing here with the saturation. It kind of alters that. We're really not going to adjust that much though. Just around about there. And I might even bring down the saturation just a little bit further. I'm just adjusting the hue again, just to about there. Okay, so now I'm going to leave the skin tone color correction and I'm actually going to start thinking about my color grade a little bit more. Now, most of my color grading is done under the color tab here, along with skin tone color corrections. So I then go down to my color balance tab here. And I actually really love this particular tab because I feel like it's very versatile with how you can get your color grades and how things can work. So we're going to work with the shadows first. I like to kind of work my, my way up from darkest to the lightest in terms of coloring and color grading. So I'm going to start with the shadows and I'm going to move this slider around and we're going to see kind of like where the shadows coloring is going to sit. Now, I kind of like maybe like a dark blue kind of color, muted blue. After you've selected your color as well, you can then go to here, which will be the saturation of that particular color. So if you're finding that it's a bit too saturated up here, you can kind of bring that down a little bit. Same with the lightness and the darkness of it, although that's really not gonna to change too much in this instant. Okay, so I've kind of got the base for the shadows here. It's a bit more of a bluish tone and it contrasts nicely with the warmth of the skin tone. Then I'm going to move on to mid-tone. And then we're going to kind of like choose something that kind of fits in with the skin tone a little bit better, I think, here. So maybe something around the yellows, the oranges. Just kind of picking something there. And then moving down the saturation just a little bit more on that. Okay, so we can see there's kind of like a little bit of a contrast there. We can always up the shadow to kind of help it contrast even more. So I might just up that just a little bit. And then we'll go back to highlight. So highlight is going to work with the lightest parts of the image with that color. So we can really kind of choose a color that will really affect the skin tone here. So I don't want to choose something that is too kind of off, but if I go to kind of cool, it can make the skin tone look a little bit sickly, which in some ways can be kind of a stylistic choice. Uh, but I feel like in this case, we might stick to something that might be a little bit warmer. So here I've kind of like chosen a bit more of like a kind of greeny yellow color, which kind of helps to keep the warmth a little bit more, but just kind of gives it a little bit more of a color grading kind of option. And then you can adjust the lightness. I'm not going to adjust it too much though, because I really feel like this can kind of make it look a little bit funny sometimes if we move this slider down a little bit too much. And then we can go back into our color editor tab and you can actually go to some of these particular color tabs here. So you can really adjust the oranges, the reds, certain colors in the image. It's basically like using selective color in Photoshop. 
So we can actually move the saturation down and up with some of those. So I'm actually going to just move it just up a little bit because I think a little bit more saturated in this particular instance would be nice. And then just kind of moving it over just a bit more to the golden side. It's sometimes hard to find out what you kind of want to push for with a color grade, especially with beauty photography, because you are so focused on skin color correction. And especially when you do the skin color correction at first, it can be difficult to figure out how much you want to correct it because as I said, it can get very altered when you're doing your color grade. And it is hard to do a color grade overall at times with beauty photography because I do find that it is something that affects most of the skin tone when you're doing it. Okay, and one more thing that I'm going to do before we do our sharpening and processing that part of the image is by going back to the exposure tab because one thing that I want to do is make sure that this eye and this particular iris area stands out. So one way I'm going to do that is by moving up the shadows a little bit. And we're just going to kind of move them up a bit so that particular area is quite visible and I can work with it a little bit more if I was to put it into Photoshop. So not too much, but just enough to kind of brighten that up a bit. And as a final touch to this image, I would then go on to do sharpening. So sharpening is located just under the details tab over here. And then I would just kind of push up the sharpening a little bit further along with the radius just to kind of get as much texture as possible. And this is basically how I would process my images in Capture One. So I want to show you guys a before and after now of how this looks. So you can kind of see here with the split view that this is my after. So it's very much color graded. This is the before. You're definitely seeing a lot more of the warmth of the skin tone in this. And here you're seeing a little bit more of a stylized version of that. So as I said, it's very difficult to get a color grade sometimes while having the perfect skin color correction. It almost doesn't exist. And you sometimes have to look past that. But this is kind of a good example of what you can achieve in Capture One with processing your images and how you can kind of work the color to your advantage. Now I'm going to show a full before and after in a second just to show you what that looks like. So this is the before and this is the after. Before, after. So guys, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial today in Capture One and please let me know if you'd like to see more Capture One tutorials. I am planning on putting out some more tutorials in the future, whether they're Photoshop related, Affinity Photo or Capture One related. So please let me know what you want to see. If you like this video today, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, make sure that you do and make sure you click the notification bell so you can see all the videos that I have coming up in future. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.